When you become a leader of a country, is it better to be a generous leader, or a stingy one? Today, let's take a few minutes, to look at how the infamous, the prince, responds to this question. The father of modern political science, Machiavelli wrote in, The Prince, that when you act generously, you will lose the ability to be generous. You'll either be poor or despised by others. You'll either become insatiable to avoid poverty, and be condemned by everyone. Therefore, the wisest course of action, is to endure the criticism of being stingy, and not provoke hatred. Instead, strive for the reputation of generosity, which will attract greed and hatred. When we see this argument, we may feel a strong moral discomfort, because his views, are precisely the opposite of traditional morality. Even from a realist perspective, for us as individuals, it seems to maintain a generous social image, brings benefits, far outweighing the benefits of a stingy image. A generous prince, often can, in personal social credit, play a certain leverage role, but for a national entity, the issue is not that simple, because tendencies of generosity and stinginess, are directly linked to the financial risks of a country. Machiavelli believed that a prince should not be generous, but rather be stingy, because generosity has unsustainable development characteristics, would mean building more public facilities. This means having to build more public facilities, or provide more social welfare for society. But money doesn't just appear out of thin air. For any grand event, someone has to foot the bill behind it. Machiavelli believed that if the prince personally foots the bill, although one may gain a generous reputation, the demands of the people will become increasingly difficult to meet. If the state treasury foots the bill, it will inevitably lead to oppressive governance, with even more exploitation of the common people, and further impact political stability. Therefore, Machiavelli is simply teaching rulers, not to be a stingy villain, but rather reminding rulers, to reflect and think before spending money. Not to seek only short-term gains, not to crave the praise of the people, nor to covet false diplomatic images. This is a very realistic consideration. That runs through the entire discourse on rulership. Machiavelli writes in, The Prince, My intention is, to write something beneficial for everyone, so I should follow the effective truth of things. Rather than an imagination of things, he believes that the reputation of generosity towards rulers, a prudent fiscal policy is contradictory. The decision-making tendency of political leaders must be pragmatic, and should not be speculative. Therefore, Machiavelli's requirements for the virtues of a prince, are distinct from the general morals of the public, rather than pursuing virtues like generosity, kindness, and tolerance. What is more important for a prince is to possess the virtue of prudence. In other words, all the virtues of a prince, should be based on prudence. For example, generosity without prudence becomes a facade. Courage without prudence becomes recklessness and foolishness. Kindness and tolerance without prudence, lead to weakness and indulgence. He believes that for a prince, virtues are not the general social morals or religious ethics, but a practical governing ability. Machiavelli's years of political experience have convinced him, that the so-called shepherd of God and religious ethics, explanation of the concept of the state, all are tricks used by Christianity to deceive rulers for their own gain, and deceive the monarch. The essence of the state, is not a means to achieve noble ideals, but a mere vessel of power. Therefore, Machiavelli wrote in, the prince, even if doing bad things, is necessary to maintain political stability, then it must be done. Do not worry about the condemnation bad reputation may bring. Those who may not read carefully, are very likely to take things out of context. People think that Machiavelli emphasizes, using any means to achieve an end, to maintain political stability, even resorting to evil without limits. In fact, when we understand, Machiavelli's advocacy of prudence and virtue, we will find that in unnecessary times, he still uses the worst means to maintain stability. For Machiavelli, he is not a qualified ruler either, because he attracted unnecessary doubts and insults. Instead, it will affect the stable political environment. Machiavelli's The Prince, it stems from his many years of political practice, and practical observations, rather than mere Machiavellianism, are coming up with groundbreaking theories, teaching people theories of unscrupulous evil deeds. In the dedication of the prince, we can see that it was written for the Medici family. So many people believe this was his way to seek favor for official positions, using a book for self-promotion, although young Lorenzo scorned this. Apart from the prince, Machiavelli also wrote the discourses on Livy, the art of war of Florence, and even a play called Mandragola. It can be said that he was a versatile person, and more importantly, a politician with practical experience. He served as the top diplomat of Florence, and also as the commander of the city-state's army. In the whirlpool of politics, he is a political persecutor. Of course, he is also a victim of persecution. Countless people in history have believed that, Machiavelli is an evil teacher. He is the guide of all tyrants. In fact, many accusations cannot be directly attributed to him. But there is no doubt, Machiavelli's, The Prince, is the pioneering work of modern political science. It is the most distinct work that distinguishes ancient and modern politics. The most clear-cut work. It can be said that Machiavelli redefined politics. 
He brought politics back from the heavens to earth, allowing future generations to see clearly that politics is not something, a means to achieve a perfect secular life. Stripping away the ideal of politics from religious concepts, we can discover that the essence of politics is more about the distribution and exercise of power. Revolving around the acquisition and retention of power, humans are often prone to abandoning morals, even if they do not want to admit it verbally. So we can see, the political concepts of modern society often revolve around institutional design. We no longer appeal to political leaders, to have moral consciousness, to be perfect individuals, to be saints, nor do we expect moral excellence anymore, but resort to institutional corrections. We pay more attention to how a country distributes power. Even when returning to personal reflection, I believe, spitting on Machiavelli for moral self-justification, performing moral acts in public spaces, are all very superficial. For us modern people, we should ask ourselves more, am I a rule-abiding person? Because both following and not following are obvious. But when we ask ourselves, am I a person of moral integrity? We easily lose ourselves in abstract concepts. Focus on me to take you through philosophy in layman's terms. Friends, see you next time.